now uh, this is what not to do this is a big part for both for all of them do not put all of them in the same part don't do it you're not supposed to this is what not to do hold on welcome back to tips and tricks tuesdays with smart girl gardening today we're going to look at our lemongrass fever grass yes so I'm going to transplant this fever grass or show you how I transplanted this fever grass and I will also be giving you six smart tips and tricks of how to care for your lemongrass so that you can get an abundance of it. But you know, before we jump into the video, we can't talk about lemongrass without drinking some fever grass tea. Yes, yeah, so let's relax and just make a cup of tea together before we start this video. shell delicious everything in one yeah this is good mm. uh, comment below if you've ever drank lemongrass or fever grass tea do you like it do you like the taste and how do you use your lemongrass if you use lemongrass at all because i know we in the caribbean we use lemongrass and in asian cuisine of course it's used here but if anybody else is watching do you use your lemongrass how do you use it please comment below and let me know all right so you know what time it is before we jump to the video and we're going to start with a hey, tips and tricks tuesdays a hey, tips and tricks tuesdays a hey, tips 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 and tricks tuesdays with smart girl gardening yes all right so while we sit and we have a little conversation with each other let's you know step into my living room while we drink some tea and just talk before we start though i know you keep hearing me say lemongrass fever grass i will be using both entertain i'll be using both entertain <laughs> i will be using both interchangeably <laughs> so i'll be using both lemongrass and fever grass why because most people call it lemongrass right However, in Jamaica, we call it fever grass because usually when you have a high temperature or you're sick, you have a cold, you drink this tea, listen, fever is reduced, hence the name fever grass. Thinking, why am I drinking it now? Well, when I woke up this morning, my temperature was a bit high. It wasn't feverish. It was about 37.4. So... I need to get that lowered. I don't want it to, you know, go up. Or do I? I wouldn't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, that was... No. No, okay. So we, I want to lower my temperature. So it's 37.4. Okay, so the first smart tip. So smart tip one is 
transplanting. So it's best to repot or transplant your fever grass, lemongrass, in spring. So after you know the danger of frost is gone, and I mean gone, because honey is very tropical like me, she does not like the cold. We, mm, we need the sun, we need warmth, yes. And another reason is if your fever grass, lemongrass grows in the same pot every year, it's best to repot it each year because you know to replenish the nutrients in the soil to give your plant a, you know a boost and I actually have a clip of me transplanting this so let's let's jump into that clip now lemongrass is such an amazing plant and with the flavor it gives it's both culinary and medicinal I have four plants here one is already in when you are transplanting your lemongrass, it's best, so you have all of this growth, it's best to prune it back a bit, so just cut some of the top leaves off. Let's see, let's do this one as well. There we go. This will help to stimulate or promote new growth or new roots. So next one. And there we go. I will use these to brew a very nice batch of tea. And when it cools, I will store it in the fridge and maybe freeze some ice cubes from it to, because the days are getting hot, and to have some iced lemon grass tea. Okay, so this is our pruning. And now we have less of a hassle when transplanting. I will see where I want them. Now usually you can just put one lemon grass in one pot and it will it will as you can see from the leaves it will bloom it will grow it will come very bushy however i don't have enough um, pots right now so i'm just going to put them here together when the time comes i will just separate them and put them into newer pots yes i know it's more hassle but it's you know you have to <laughs> make do with what you have so the soil is relatively moist and I'm just going to make a small, well, oops, make some of the holes. Remove the pot. Oh, that's a nice, nice growth. It's not really root bound yet. And when you put it in, ensure that you fill it up too. So when you fill it up, you fill it up to the line of where the dirt is already. So don't go beyond it and gently Pack it down. Okay, and that's just basically it. Okay, so now that we've seen how to transplant your lemongrass, this is what it looks like a few weeks after I, you know, gave it a haircut. And as you can see, it's flourishing. It's it's amazing. Smart tip number two is the pot. The best pot to use for your for your fever grass. It's best to use a large pot that has at least a 12 inch diameter, so across, so 12 inch across. Do not follow me and put four plants in one pot. I had no space, so I did it like this. Try to at least put one plant per pot. So you can use a pot that has a 12 diameter um, or a five gallon pot this is a five gallon cloth pot okay pro tip i would suggest that you don't use a terracotta pot because the lemongrass it loves moisture it doesn't like a wet soil but it loves constant moisture and if you use a terracotta pot it will tend to wick or absorb the moisture away from the roots away from the plant too quickly and you listen they are forever thirsty. They're always drinking. So yeah, you need a pot that will, even though this is a cloth pot, it offers aeration, but it also helps it with the moisture as well. Okay, so next we have with, <clears throat> I'm a little parched. Mm. Okay, 
So smart tip number three is the light. Because this is a tropical plant, it's best to place it in a location where it gets at least six hours of full sunlight. She likes the bake, she likes the sun. Listen, full sunlight for at least six hours. They like high heat, high humidity, and lots of sun, and they will thrive. If you plan on overwintering your plants, it's best to bring them inside before, well before the first frost, and you know, before the, the night temperatures get to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And just, just a note, plants that tend to grow in the shade or shaded will end up being very sparse, right? So you may wonder why your plant isn't as bushy, why isn't it getting enough leaves because you've seen lemongrass, just, right? If it's, if it's in a shaded location, it may not give you enough leaves or enough bulbs and really grow. Okay, smart tip number four is the best soil. It prefers a rich, loamy soil that is, of course, well draining. Uh, you can create this by, you know, mixing simple garden soil or potting mix and adding compost, manure, and maybe leaf mold. Mix it together and this will give you just the right amount of soil for it. You can add also vermiculite, perlite and vermiculite. Perlite, both of them allows for, you know, drainage while draining soil. However, the vermiculite will hold on to moisture while the perlite doesn't. So for this plant, you could add a little bit of vermiculite into your mix and it will help with moisture retention. With maybe a pH of about 6.5 to 7. And smart tip number five, watering. The best way to water your plant. So listen, lemongrass is not, and I repeat, it is not drought resistant. If she gets a, just a tops, a bit parched, she goes, I don't like this, I'm dying. Okay, bye. Yeah, she, mm, she does not like. <laughs> A dry soil. It's best to keep the roots continuously moist. Continuously moist does not mean wet and soggy so don't let it sit in water. That's why you add in your vermiculite a little bit of perlite to assist with the drainage. It well it needs constant moisture so therefore I would suggest that you water top inch becomes dry so you know you do the finger test you know just take your little finger, stick it in. If it comes up wet, <laughs> listen. This 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 is a family show. This is PG. This is PG. Reel it back in, girl. Reel it back in. Stick your finger in. If it comes up, mm -hmm, it it needs some water. And just a pro tip for when watering, I would suggest that when you're watering, you keep your water at the base of your plant because sometimes when you top water and you get water on the leaves, it can promote um, you know, mold, mildew, and just disease in general, and you don't want your plant to get sick, okay? Mm. Smart tip number six is the best way to fertilize your plant. So because of nature of the plant, it needs to be fed or fertilized every couple of weeks with, with a water-soluble fertilizer. Um, because it's a grass, <laughs> hence the name lemongrass fever grass, it, it needs a nitrogen-rich fertilizer. So usually when you go to the store, if you buy store-bought fertilizer like this one for Japan, it will say NPK, so nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and it needs the N to be a higher number so nitrogen it's best to get a fertilizer that is probably 640 so you know nitrogen is 6 phosphorus is 4 and then potassium is 0 however because being in Japan I could not find a fertilizer like that in the store okay so I use this fertilizer it's 
and I'm not sure if you can see it. It's an N55 uh, fertilizer. It's made for greens and grasses and it also has iron in it. So this is what I use to fertilize my lemongrass every two weeks. So I take two corkfuls in my five liter watering jug and I water it. While on the other hand, if you prefer to use your own more organic natural fertilizer, you can use manure tea. So you know, you can make your own, maybe your chicken manure, etc. Um, soak it in water and then use that to water your plant. In cold regions, you can trim back your lemongrass to a few inches above the soil, like I did in the first transplant, and then place it in a bright south-facing window. I don't, unfortunately, have that option because my balcony is actually east-facing. So what I do, I put it at my balcony door and I use an artificial light, like a grow light, to assist with adding some brightness during winter and then you should keep the soil barely moist because you know it's going to go into dormancy and you don't want to get root rot and damage your plant. Another option is after you've cut it down you can store it, <laughs> yes I said store, store it in a dark cool location and water it only a few times, a couple of times during the season so that the roots don't die on you. And as it starts to get a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter, you take it out and you put it in your window area, your bright window area. And then when the temperatures, the night temperatures, get above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, you can then start to slowly bring it outside after, after the threat of the frost. Um, is finished. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video was beneficial to you and if it was please comment below and let me know if these tips and tricks helped you out and if you have other tips and tricks that you use when you're growing your lemongrass I would love to know and so that I can use them in my balcony garden. Thank you again. Later!